Hi and hello, I am Athena Pondian here. Welcome to the basics of biomedical classroom once again. Today we are going to see the next vital parameter that is EOG, that is called as electrooculography. So what is electrooculography and what are the five different questions we need to answer for this particular EOG, all the things we are going to discuss now. Come let me start the class today. As like as the previous uh, vital parameters, we are supposed to answer five questions for EOG also. That is, the first question is, what is EOG? The second question is, what is the purpose of EOG? And the third question we are supposed to answer is, how to acquire this EOG from the human body? And the fourth question we are supposed to answer is, what is the waveform you got from the EOG? And the fifth, what to measure? using the waveform that is what to diagnose using that particular EOG waveform so these are all the five different questions we are supposed to answer we are supposed to answer the first question what is EOG of course EOG of course you know that what is E represents electrical activity that is called as electro and this graphy is nothing but the it is some of something measurement or something a measuring technique okay then this is represented as oculo. Oculo represents your human eye. Okay, so electrical activity of the human eye by using some of the measuring technique that is called as the electrooculography. Okay, here this particular EOG, the, the, the technique of this particular EOG can be expressed in the terms of this electrooculography is a measuring technique that is particularly for measuring the corneoretinal standard potential between the front and the back of the human eye please remember if in case this is the human eye this is the human eye and this is the retina and the optic nerve all the thing if in case this is the cornea this is the frontal portion is called as the cornea and the back portion is called as that is the third layer of the uh, eye is called as the retina if you want to measure the corneo retinal standard potential corneo retinal standard potential between the front and the back of the eye that is called as the electrooculography okay please remember cornea it is in the front portion retina it is in the back portion that is the third layer of the eye if you want to measure the standard potential between the front and the back of the eye that measurement is called as the electrooculography okay this particular electrooculography give the signal give the signal and the final output of this particular measurement that is EOG the electrooculography is electrooculogram please remember electrooculogram is the final signal that we are receiving after the electrooculography technique okay please remember this is the answer for the first question Then the second question what we need to answer is what is the purpose of EOG? Of course you know that for diagnosis process of your human eye can able to done by this particular technique. Even though there are so many equipments are there to diagnose so many disorders of the eye, this EOG is particularly for measuring the counts or measuring the functionality of your eye pigments. Please remember. Even though there are so many equipments are there this EOG technique is particularly for measuring the functionality of your eye pigments. Of course, you know that eye pigments are rods and the cones. Rods are responsible for the dim light and the cones are responsible for the bright light. If you want to measure the activity of that particular rods and cones, how these particular rods are responsible during the dim light, how these cones are responsible for the bright light, can able to measure for the particular person using this EOG. This is the main purpose of this particular EOG technique. Okay, we can able to analyze or we can able to measure the activity or the functionality of this eye pigments. Okay, at the same time, if you, if the person having any uh, movement variations, the person having any eye movement variations, then that sort of movements are also can able to acquire or can able to analyze using this electrooculography. This is the purpose we are go for this electrooculography technique. Okay, this is the second question answer.
then the next question what you are supposed to answer is how to acquire this EOG waveform we know that what is EOG and what is the purpose of EOG so we are supposed to take the EOG signal from the eye so how we can able to acquire this EOG of course you all know that all the thing are electrical activity so all the electrical activity can able to pick from the human body through the transducers or the electrodes the electrodes is the best way to acquire the electrical signal from the human body okay so that is what here also we are supposed to use the electrodes okay here from for the measurement of uh, EOG we can able to place the electrodes above and below of the eye or right and left of the eye please remember you can able to place the electrodes like this for example this is the human eye we are supposed to place the electrodes like this we are supposed to place the electrodes like this okay we are supposed to place the electrodes like this we are place the electrodes up and above and below of the eye and the right and left of the eye okay if you place the electrodes like this if the patient moves their eye from the center position moves their eye from the center position towards any of the electrodes towards any of the electrode then that is says to be the positive side of the retina please remember okay then the opposite side is to be the negative side of the retina please remember if the person move their eye from the center towards any of the electrodes in this direction or this direction okay towards any of the electrodes then that is seems to be the positive side of the retina then the opposite side is considered as the negative side please remember if the person's eye is moving towards in this direction then this is considered as the positive side of the retina then the opposite side is considered as the negative sides of the retina so according to the electrodes where the eye is looking over then the opposite side is considered as the negative side of the retina so that is the thing we need to remember okay so the process is repeatedly happen the person is moving their eye towards this direction first and during the time this is this side is positive and that time this side is negative then the person is supposed to see the that see in the, that direction then that time this side is positive and this side is negative then repeatedly the person is want to uh, see like this up and down or the left and right up and down and left and right up and down left and right this process repeatedly happens then the positive or negative terminals is keep on changing due to that the potential differences happen between these two electrodes because of these particular potential difference variation we can able to acquire the signal called electrooculogram okay then the next thing what we need to answer is what is the waveform we acquire we are place the electrodes and the potential difference is framed and what is the waveform we are getting this is the waveform we got of course we know that the person are supposed to move from the eye towards the left side and towards the right side and up and down okay so from during that particular process this graph is acquired the person is move their eye towards the left side then this particular waveform arise towards the right side this particular waveform or the person is supposed to move up and down this particular up and down variation is cut so this is the normal waveform it having the potential minus 0.7 volt millivolt of course then this acquired the positive terminal that is during the right hand side 0.8 millivolt please remember or moving the up and down that is minimum voltage that is 0.1 millivolt and minus 0.2 millivolt then along with the amplitude the time duration is also play a role here it is acquired in the 0.9 seconds here it is acquired in a point 9 second approximately it is both are equal and this, once you are measuring the time duration of the up uh, up and down movement of the eye we can able to place the minimum duration that is point not 2 seconds and point not 4 seconds so using this particular amplitude variation and the time duration the normal and abnormal condition of the patient can be acquired if there is any variations in the time duration and the amplitude that is uh, acquired from the patient then the persons acquired some of the problem okay so this is how we can able to identify the person's abnormality okay this is the question number 4 answer
ask the question is what would you diagnose using this particular waveforms or using these techniques what to diagnose we are supposed to take the Arden ratio we are supposed to take the Arden ratio the Arden ratio is nothing but the light trough divided by dark trough so what is light trough and what is dark trough that is the thing we are supposed to know then only we can able to measure from this particular waveforms okay here Arden ratio the patient is supposed to measure the resting potential during the dark and during the light first of all if you want to take the uh, pigmental epithelium condition the patient is supposed to sit in the dark during the dark time the resting potential of the particular patient is slightly slowed down or slightly decreases that is called as the dark trough during the dark time the patient's uh, resting potential on the eye is slightly decreases that is called as the dark trough once the light is switched on the rest resting potential of the particular person is slightly got increasing gradually it got increasing that is called as the light trough okay so if you want to take the ratio between this we can able to get the arden ratio So this particular Arden ratio shows that the normal and abnormal condition of the eye pigmental epithelium. If there is any variations in the normal, then the particular person is affected by this pigmental epithelium count variation. If the person is a normal Arden ratio, then there is no variations in the pigmental epithelium. The person are supposed to uh, diagnose some other treatment. So this is how we can able to identify whether the patient's uh, uh, potential, that is, uh, pigmental epithelium, is properly functioning or not. Using this Arden ratio, from this graphical representation, we can able to understand the pair that is the movement of the eye and also the pigmental epithelium of the eye. Using the potential difference, we got the waveform and we got this Arden ratio. So this is what we can able to know the small description about EOG, that is electrooculography. So we are supposed to answer five different questions. What is EOG? What is the purpose of EOG? How we can able to acquire the EOG? And what is the waveform you got? And what we can able to measure using the EOG? So these are all the five different questions I answered. So hope so you understand the small description about EOG. In the next class, we are supposed to see the next vital parameter. Thank you very much.